setters. This video is for you. I say the setter. This video is for you. How do you know who to set in a game? Ooh, it can be tricky. Let's get right into it. So hi, my name is Coach Coco and I love volleyball. So much so my channel's filled with tips, tricks, hacks, and anything you could ever need to know about volleyball. And we've been talking about a lot of different more volleyball strategy things as of lately because we really want to not only be good players on the court, but we want to be players on the court. You know that 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 gif like this? Yes. So as a setter, you have so many things going through your mind every single time you play. You have to focus on the tempo of the game across from you. You have to have the tempo of your own court. You need to understand where your hitters are. You need to be followed by rotation. You need to do all of these things at the same time. And sometimes that can be daunting, especially if you are a new setter and you're just now coming into your own. And you know, you have to make sure you're not doubling the ball. Am I overwhelming you? so sorry but here's the thing who do you know who to set now when you're a setter and you're a new setter or you're a learning setter or a developing setter because we're all developing nobody's perfect we're all still learning when you're seeing your hitters the first thing that you want to know is you want to have an understanding of the flow of your team what does that mean coco that means that you need to understand how your team flows as a unit as the game is going on is everybody disgruntled and bumping into each other because the rotation isn't fixed is everybody kind of like where am i supposed to be right or is everybody flowing as a unit where everybody's moving to their position they're covering they're understanding and observing coverage patterns they're in system that's what i mean by the flow so you need to observe the flow of your game the opportunities for you to observe the flow of the game happen during practice happen during games happen in a game this is something that you will build over time so it's something that you need to put your eyes on so as a setter you should never just be just sitting there at the net just right you should be looking to see is the libero in position okay is who's covering short who's behind me is there an opposite behind me hey girl you need to make sure that you know where people are is my outside is she ready is she transitioning far back enough is the middle there is she too close to me you know things like that will really determine who's available and who can set but on the retrospective of that you also need to observe the other side of the court do they have a six foot tall middle blocker and she's just blocking everything does that mean i'm gonna give somebody a quick set i don't know can she block it you know things like that really do determine if the outcome of a point and i know that this sounds like so much to keep up with and you do not have to do it alone that's where the coach can start to signal or you can hear sometimes you hear the crowd use that light judgment lightly but the coach will start to signal teammates will start to say hey i think deep is open you know but this is just something to keep in mind when you're thinking about the flow of the game so Moving on to the next step. I understand, okay, okay, Coco, I get it. I understand the flow. I understand how my court is working. I get it. Now what do I do? Okay, so now we have to find the available hitter who's number one ready to receive the ball. And number two, there's a good outcome with this. So let's give a scenario. Let's say that your outside hitter, she's ready, and your middle blocker slash hitter, she's ready. But the middle blocker, there's, an, I, there's a blocker here who is in front of her and her blocking ratio so far you've seen her get three blocks back to back on your middle back to back are we going to give it again to the middle or are we going to give it to an open outside because they're not covering this is what we mean by using that volleyball foresight to be able to use to think critically quick enough in the future so that way we can have a better outcome so what that means is i want you to not like look into the future because you're not you're not you're not psychic but i want you to use critical thinking to be able to think about some logical conclusions if you have a triple block on the outside maybe i shouldn't be setting the outside if i set both the outside and we can't get a point from her and i've set the middle and we can't get a point from her maybe it's time to try to try opposite right using that kind of kind of critical thinking is what's going to score us some points now let's say that you are not confident at all in your middle set and you haven't learned it yet and it's stressful for you and you're like my god i'm not ready i want you to try it anyway because you have to learn eventually but the best game the best scenarios and the best place to learn how to set a specific ball 
is in game. And I know that I know that it could be controversial because sometimes we like to do isolated blocked practice where we're at practice and we're just doing two and we're just doing two and we're just doing two and that's how we learn. But also sometimes the best growth, the best jumping skill is in game. I know, I know. Sometimes the best jumping skill is in game. I don't want you to have fear. Don't let fear be your motivator. I want you to still try because you never know the outcome. And sometimes you may surprise yourself. So using that volleyball foresight and that volleyball skill that you have to, uh, to be able to set, I want you to combine those, then that is how you determine who you're going to set. But don't forget about the back row. Back row is an excellent option if, you know, I've tried outside tried middle, I've tried opposite, you know, give the back row an opportunity to hit. But remember, you need to understand the back row rules, right? You need to understand that they can jump behind the 10 foot line and transcend over the 10 foot line, but they can't jump in front of the 10 foot line. So making sure you understand that is a excellent way to make sure you're staying within the legality. Now, what if you get a bad pass? And this happens more often than not. So if you get a bad pass, it does severely limit your options of who you're going to set, right? So typically players who, if they get a really bad pass, they'll try to get the ball up and call for help, or they'll try to get the ball up near the, mo the most able-bodied attacker for help, right? So when you do have a bad pass, you, what you want to do is you want to try to get it high and get it try, try to get it towards a, an attacker. So that means that if it's a bad pass and it's right up on your chest, right, you want to make sure that you're going to get it high and up and call for somebody else outside, give it to somebody who's going to be able to do something with it, right? So that does severely limit, I understand, it severely limits who you can give it to, but we wanna make sure to get the ball high so somebody can do so. No, I don't mean high to the ceiling and it's in the rafters. I mean high enough that everybody can see it and you're communicating, it's up, it's up. Sometimes using a phrase like it's up can indicate to others, that was crazy, but let's do something. That was crazy, but let's do something, okay? Using those, those tips and tools and tricks are a way that you can be able to determine who you're going to set, how you're going to set them, and how you're more able to see the court around you, okay? I hope that you like this video. I hope that it was informative for you and it gives you a little bit better idea so you're not as confused. Um, share this with somebody who needs it. As always, you are always welcome to drop in the comments below some videos that you would like to see and I will see you guys next time.